Hello. Uh, what we're going to talk about in this video is frame of reference and a bit about coordinate systems. So first of all, um, here I am. Uh, and if, uh, if I was to ask you, hey, where am I? Um, you might say, well, over there. Or, but that doesn't really tell us anything unless you say something like, oh, I'm right in front of the whiteboard. Or I'm two feet away from, from you. Or something like that. You can't talk about where something is unless it's in reference to something else. Compared to something else, I'm this far away from that and this direction from it. Um, so you really have to, uh, you can't have just, if you had an ob a universe that only had one object in it, you could never say where it was. It has to be compared to something else. So what we typically do uh, to make things clear, so it's not just, oh, you're over there or here, we usually like to drop a coordinate axis down on the world. And so you're used to seeing this in math class. Um, that you go ahead and you drop an axis down, something like this. And when you do that, you're going to have to pick somewhere to say, this is the position that we're going to compare everything to, compare everything's positions against. And so there's some place that we'll call the origin of our coordinate system. Some place that we'll say, oh, hey, look, right here, see that? I'm going to call that the origin. That's position zero. That's my center. And if uh, where I'm going to compare everything's, everything's position to. And then I might go ahead and mark out my axes. And, right? and I go ahead and I say, hey, this is one, this is two, this is three, and so on. What's this position? Well, you'd say, well, going this way, I'd have to add one to get to each position. So going the other way, I'd have to subtract one, subtract one, subtract one, subtract one, I'd be at negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. That's how we do a coordinate axis. Um, so if someone were to ask you now, if I would say, hey, where am I? Where would you say I'm located now with reference to this coordinate axis, right? Well, I think you would say, many of you would say, hey, you look like you were at maybe, what do you want to call that? 2.2 would be my position. But I, someone might then say, no, no, no. He wasn't at 2.2. He was from here to here. In other words, indicating that I have width in class. And many of the times we're looking at motion. We're not so concerned with like the extent of an object. We're going to be more concerned with looking at just pure kinematics, pure motion, about where the object is. And we don't care about like, oh, well, he went from here to here and then from here to here. Usually it's like, we'll just treat objects like they're all shrunk down to a point. Like all of their materials at one spot. We just care about where that one spot is. What we typically do is talk about like the average position of all the particles in something. Okay, for a human being, that's typically near our belly buttons. Okay, in that spot, we have a special name. We call that the center of mass. And so usually, if someone asks where someone is, we just say, oh, where's their center of mass? And that's the location that we assign to them. So we're treating people like all their mass is a point particle. We talk about treating things as if they're a particle. And so in this case, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, where was I? I was at 2.2. That's where my center of mass is. Will just treat me like I'm a particle. And that's okay for what we're doing. If I start dealing with objects that are um, extended bodies that maybe they can like stretch or squish as they move, I'm gonna start having to worry more about how that mass is distributed. Or if I'm concerned about things spinning, I'm gonna care a lot more about how the mass is spread out in space. But for what we're doing, typically we'll treat objects like they're a point particle, and that'll work fabulously for a long, long time. We can get away with that. Okay, so coordinate axes and treating objects as if they're point particles. Next thing I need to talk about is frame of reference. So we talked about, I'm going to talk about uh, positions. When I say I'm at 2.2, I'm saying I'm 2.2 units away from the origin. You say, what if I'm at over at negative 2? Well, then I'm 2 units in this direction from the origin. We have to give directions names. We're used to talk about things being to the left, to the right, but you know that if I'm looking at the board, this is to the left and this is to the right. But if I'm looking at you, this is to my left and this is to my right. So what was right is now left could be confusing when communicating with people. 
So we usually drop a coordinate system down, and we talk about things being in the positive direction or in the negative direction, and it makes it much clearer for everyone. So that's how we deal with directions. Um, we will do more, uh, especially the next unit. We will go ahead and we'll start looking at two-dimensional motion, three-dimensional motion. And so we'll worry about things being in other directions. We can easily drop a, a y-axis down or a vertical axis down, I should say. You know, and we can go ahead and mark this off. Boom, 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 and have a positive direction and negative direction uh, for this axis, right? Um, but for right now, we're just going to work with one-dimensional motion to start with. We're trying to build up our understanding of how the universe works from the most fundamental basic bits and build up. And so that's what we're doing. So here I have this cute little buggy. Look at this guy. And what I've, what I've done here is you see I've laid down, started laying down a coordinate axis. But we really should mark uh, where we want to make our origin, where we want to make, uh, if you want, our frame of reference. We're going to do everything compared to here, say, this mark. So I could go ahead and label that. If I'd like, position zero. Okay. So this is my, my origin, my coordinate system. Hey, let's call this the positive direction. Then I might label this position one. And I might go ahead and label this position then. That's right. Call that negative one. And this, of course, over here, way over here would be negative two. Do, 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 do. All right, all right, good enough. Okay, and way over here on the edge where you can't really see it very well would be positive two, of course. All right, now in actuality, all right, in actuality, I'm not even going to use those numbers. I actually laid this out so that these are 20 centimeters apart. So I probably should just call this 20, or better yet, 0.2, uh, because we like to use meters as our base unit of measurement. Um, so this would be 0.2 meters and 0.4 meters, and this would be negative 0.2 meters and negative 0.4 meters. <sighs> Should have done it that way. But moving on. So let's say that I have my buggy, and I go ahead and I set it down somewhere, like maybe here. Where would you say the buggy's located? You'd say it's at negative 1, or if you like, negative 20 centimeters or negative 0.2 meters um, is where that's located. Right, and you see, I'm, I'm, but you see, but if I do that, am I basing it on about where the center of mass is of this guy? Okay, I'm saying that's its position. Um, now, because this is a rigid object, it's not going to flex around on us or wiggle around on us, stretch um, or shrink. I could pick actually, technically, for what I'm doing here, if I'm concerned about how far it moves, which is really our topic here, then I really could measure from any point on the object because. The, right, the left wheel here, left front wheel, is going to move the same distance, right, as the center of mass moves. You know what I mean? Any point on this object is going to shift, except for this part, don't look at that, is going to move the same distance, right? So, um, so for our purposes today, and I know I talked about treating things like they're a point particle located at the center of mass, uh, but for today, I think I'm just going to use the front bumper, the front edge of this, and talk about where the front edge of this is. So here we are. And... We're going to go ahead and start this guy way down here at negative 2 or negative uh, 0.40 meters, right? And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll start this off. And if I wanted to go ahead and take a look at its motion, uh, one thing that people might be concerned with here, we'll go ahead and show you what this looks like. Three, two, one, go. You see it move right along. Okay. And if I asked you, hey, what direction is it traveling in? You would say... That's right, it was traveling in the positive direction. To go from here to here, I have to add to my position to get to the next value. I have to add, I'm adding. So I'm going the positive direction. And of course, um, we could go ahead and we could do a calculation. If I were to grab a little stopwatch or a timer. So if I have my buggy here, if I wanted to, I could take a, a cute little pink timer like this. And I go ahead and I could time how long it takes it to travel a certain distance here. Um, and from that, I can calculate how fast it's going. So if I go ahead and do that, go three, two, one. Then we find that it takes it only about a half a second to travel each of these, right? And so that means uh, if it's going one unit and a half a second, you're like, oh my gosh, it's going, gonna do two of these units every second, we could say it has a speed 
of two units per second, okay, whatever these units are. I know they're really 20 centimeters. We can do the calculation, but let's just say two units per second. And so um, I could say it's got a speed of two units per second, but, you know, if I did that, we'd say, hey, it's going this direction. And so we'd say it has a speed of two units per second in the positive direction or a speed of positive two units per second. But what if I were to go ahead and start off like this? Whoa, I just shifted my whole coordinate axis. Oh no, three, two, one. You'd say, well, what's its speed now? Well, we would say it still has a speed of two units per second, but it has a velocity of negative two units per second. In other words, we have two different terms, speed and velocity in physics, okay? Because you find you found already in your studies that scientists typically are very picky. They use very specialized language so that people know exactly what they mean. They have special terms that have specific meanings. In physics, we have the term speed and the term velocity. And in everyday talk, people use those words interchangeably. But in physics, speed has to do with how fast you're moving and velocity has to do with how fast you're moving. But we'll talk more about the distinction between them later. But for now, just know that velocity includes direction and speed does not. So if I had this thing traveling along like this, its velocity is two units per second. Its speed is two units per second. If I have it traveling this way, its velocity is negative two units per second. Its speed is still two units per second. All right. So um, here we have our buggy again. Uh, right now I've got a measuring from the front bumper, have it at position negative two. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at its motion here. So say I go ahead and I get it going, and we remember how fast this thing travels. Three, two, one, go. And say, there it goes. It's going in the positive direction, and it's traveling at a speed of positive two units per second. You say, what if I did this? Now it's traveling in the negative direction. It's traveling with a velocity of negative two units per second. You say, let's try that one more time. Ready, set, go. Aha! Now how fast it traveled? He said, ah, wait a second. When he was pulling the felt out, didn't it kind of look like the buggy was just sitting right here? In that case, was it traveling at zero units per second? Was it sitting still? It depends on what you're using as your frame of reference. If I'm talking about its motion compared to, say, this chair, or the floor. It appeared to be sitting still while this was being pulled out from under it, right? And so we would say its speed was zero or its velocity was zero units per second. But if we're still using this, this location as our frame of reference to compare things, positions and velocities against, then even though the felt was moving out, it was still moving compared to this spot, it was still moving at two units per second. And so we'd still say it had a velocity of positive two units per second. So it depends on what you use as your frame of reference. And that's really kind of the key. There's times when we'll want to use kind of unusual frames of reference, but typically, what do we usually measure things, positions, or speeds against? Well, it'd be nice if we had a certain reference frame that kind of would apply everywhere, that would always be there. And so it was something that was steady we could compare things to. In everyday life, we like to use the ground as our frame of reference. We talk about how fast something's going compared to the ground. You know, if the police officer pulls you over and he says, do you know how fast you were going? He's talking about with reference to the ground, right? And I can say, well, compared to the car, I never moved. I was sitting still. In a car, you're thinking about your motion compared to, oftentimes you, you, you're like sitting in the car, if you pull something out of your pocket and you toss it up, toss it down, you just go straight up, right back down to your hand. As far as you're concerned, you're sitting still. Everything acts as if you were sitting still, even if you're riding along going down the highway at 65 miles an hour compared to the ground. So we usually use the ground as our frame of reference, but you can see how it's important when we're talking about a situation 
that everyone understands what you're using to compare your positions and speeds against, that they know what your frame of reference is. You know that when we talk about the Earth, we think about the ground as being still, but we know the Earth is actually spinning. It's rotating. It takes a day to spin all the way around, right? And so you say, oh gosh, um, I'm actually moving really fast. If you've ever done that calculation for like the distance around the planet and say, oh, I'm going to rotate around, I'm going to pass through that circumference in a day and do the calculation, it's honking fast that we're moving, right? Or to talk about the fact that Earth is moving around the sun, right? It takes a year to go all the way around the sun to orbit once. That's a really fast speed. But even the sun isn't sitting still. In fact, you remember that our star, the sun, is one of million billions of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. And that whole galaxy, all those stars are rotating, right? Okay, and our spiral arm is rotating around. And so, and I think I wanna say it takes like 120,000 years to rotate around once, I forget. Uh, but the point is, if you do that calculation, that's really fast, we're moving, right? So it depends on, and even our galaxy isn't sitting still. The galaxies are like spreading out, moving out through space. Uh, space itself kind of expands, but that's a topic for another day. So the point is, you need to make clear what your frame of reference is. Some problems are better solved from certain points of view, from certain frames of reference. And regardless of what you use, um, it's you need your listener or your reader to know what you're using. So that's that idea, frame of reference, what you measure, speed or velocity compared to. Um, just one more, one more side thing. And this is something you may have experienced. Um, if you haven't experienced it yet, you will someday soon. Okay, it's something that you kind of notice when you, it, once you start driving a bunch, I think. Have you ever been sitting in your car, right? And you're, you're parked at like a stoplight, right? Or it can even happen like in a parking lot. But you're in your car and you're sitting still, right? And there's like some other cars around you. And maybe you're kind of started like looking down at the dash, you're messing with something or whatever. Now the corner of your eye, right? You realize, oh my gosh, I'm starting to roll backwards. And you're like, you press on the brake pedal. But you actually were sitting still all along. What would happen was out of the corner of your eye, you saw the other cars start to move forward. But to you, you were kind of using that car to like reference where you were. And so as it went forward, it looked to you like it was sitting still and you were moving back. And you like press on the brake and you're like, oh, and you feel like an idiot because you weren't sitting still the whole time you're slamming on the brake. I don't know if you've experienced that yet. It'll happen sooner or later. Um, but that's a frame of reference idea. What you're using to compare your positions and velocities against. Um, it's an important idea that gets used in physics a lot. All right. I think that was it for that topic. All right, smart guy. What if I go ahead and I warp space like this and you travel across like this? How fast are you going now compared to this frame of reference?